There are signs that show us how time moves forward. However, there's a life where each day can feel and look the same as the last. Her little baby's trunk is a skunk. And she was already dead when we got the there. You're hearing testimony that led to an El Dorado man's conviction. Ricky Davis was sent to prison for the 1985 murder of a woman named Jane Hilton. Him forcing his way into there. You don't remember any of that? I, I, you know what, I think they did get into an argument. I, I've been, uh, I've been taught. But I'm so confused about this. Um. The Northern California Innocence Project reached out to the El Dorado County District Attorney, Vern Pearson, to take a look at the case, including the transcripts of interviews. He saw red flags while going through the interviews, such as questionable interrogation tactics, stories changing, and the investigator motivating a confession by saying they knew what happened that night. I was bothered by it, and as a result, uh, I agreed to their request um, to go back and retest it because, again, the, the, the worst thing we can do is convict someone falsely and incarcerate someone like Ricky Davis for all these years. In 2020, genetic genealogy freed Davis. Pearson says the line of questioning, similar to what happened to Davis, is why he's dedicated on trying to change the way investigators do interrogations. In the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, going up to 9-11, there was this entire, this very prevalent school of thought that the best way to interview subjects was to uh, assert power over them and convince them that you knew more information than you actually knew. Pearson says his office is one of the first to follow a science-based method. Other agencies that have implemented it include Los Angeles and New York police departments. In March 2020, Pearson invited us to get an exclusive look at one of the sessions they held to train other Northern California agencies. This is before the spread of COVID-19, so you won't see social distancing or masks. We spoke to the instructor, a former detective from Europe. He asked us not to show his face to protect his identity. We only serve justice by getting the right people. So it is a case really of when I go into an interview, I am trying to understand what's happened and find out as much as possible. If a confession happens, it happens. But that's not my primary motive. He says that training widely used now is more based on experience and opinions without proof. A science-based method uses academic research, peer-reviewed science, and controlled experiments. They also do field evaluations with law enforcement agencies after teaching the methods. When you teach this stuff and you can provide people with a reading list that shows that actually this, this has been studied extensively, some of this stuff has um, been around for a long time and it provides reassurance to people like the district attorney and to police departments. The pandemic has slowed down the training process with other agencies, but they've been trying to do some of it remotely.